Hello YouTubers and welcome back to another part in my um, DIY synthesizer basics tutorial videos series. Now in this video what we are going to tackle is the sine wave wave shaper and I'm just going to quickly give you a list of parts that you're going to need. You're going to need a dual op amp IC which would look like so. We can use something like a LM358 which is more ideal for a single supply if you've only got say a positive and a negative supply if we're going to use kind of 9 volts or if we're going to use a bipolar supply we can use something like a TL we can use a TL072 or 082 and as I've said before the LM358 so we're going to need one dual op amp IC integrated chip here which has two op amps inside the operational amplifiers and we're going to need one times electrolytic capacitor which will be polarized which is the slightly bigger um, capacitors which look like so and if we look on a electrolytic capacitor if we look on the striped side that is our negative the tail or leg which is the closest to that is the, the negative side the other side is the positive we can assume that's pretty much standard on every single electrolytic capacitor and if we look at things like these capacitors or these bad boys here they are non-polarized non so when we look on the schematic we won't have any plus or minus we would just see this symbol as opposed to our polarized symbol anyway going to need a couple of resistors these are not the exact value resistors doesn't matter if you want to use five percent which are the brown ones or we can use more precision red um, blue resistors which are one percent um, within the specified value and we are going to need importantly some diodes we can try and experiment with diodes here it, what may work for one person may be different for somebody else and again don't take all values what I say for complete absolute you may have to sort of experiment and see what works best for you it will be very much dependent on your current voltage etc so we have here was a normal standard 1N4148 silicon signal diode here which is pretty much um, a standard diode you can get for, for pennies uh, we've got some more sort of less, um, well, I wouldn't say less available, but these diodes here, like Zena diodes, we can look for some Zena diodes because I found that the Zena diodes worked better for me. That's the only reason why I'm, I'm mentioning this. So somebody may be screaming, saying that's completely wrong, shut up. But anyway, what works for me may, may not work for you. Right, our first ingredient, importantly, is our triangle wave in from our oscillator wave shaper now what we need to do is bring that in we may need to bring that in via a resistor and we can go for something say we go for 22k and one thing I would recommend as I always try and do when I'm building my circuits is test along the way so test at each point see the amplitude of your triangle when it comes out the other side if it's too, if it's too high bring it down put a bigger resistor in if it's too too, too low, lower the resistor. Now what we will do is come into our electrolytic capacitor in the negative side. It's very important you bring it into the negative side and then we'll take out, we'll come out from the positive side and we could say that could be about start, start value 10 microfarads. You might want to change that to 4.7. Not good enough, still not getting a good sign shape, too much distortion go a bit higher we may even need to go a bit lower to say one microfarad right so what we need to do next is we will take this into the what we would call the non-inverting side of our operational amplifier which will be noted by a plus symbol if you don't know the pinouts pretty much all standard um, dual op amp operational amplifiers have exactly the same pinouts Google image pinouts for if you're unsure if you have an IC chip try not to get it the wrong way around or it may go bang on you it won't kill you but you know it will uh, inconvenience you if, you should, if, if it's your last one left so this is we'll say this is op amp A of our TL072 for instance or our LM358 
and we have our non-inverting side which we will take a another resistor which we will say is going to be about 10k 10 kilo ohms and we will put that in the negative we will call this the negative feedback loop here and this I kind of think will will, will pretty much this is where we, we have gain um, the gain happening so if we feel that our sine wave is too distorted by the time it comes out here we may need to um, change the value of this 10k resistor let me just give these some um, numbers here so we say that's R1 and we'll call this bad boy R2 and we need to take another resistor from the same side which we'll call R3 and he can be 1 1k and we will take this to ground or our 0 volts and our 0 volts if we're using the two batteries will be where we've connected the plus and the minus from each battery together so ground stroke 0 volts and what we need to do next is take a couple of capacitors from the non-inverting, or sorry, a couple of diodes from the non-inverting side and they need to be back to back. I, I would suggest you use a Zener diode to do, to do this uh, wave shaping to start with. If you feel it doesn't work then you can go back to a um, to an electrolytic, oh, sorry, electrolytic, the uh, the normal silicon signal diodes. Let's draw that in properly, and we'll take say D one and D diode two. Both will go to ground, aka zero volts, and that is a pretty much about it. And we should have out of the other end all is well a nice sine wave again if we're feeling that the, the waveform is looking a bit clipped our problem may be we're having to we're having a lot of distortion we've got too too high input signal or too high gain so again change these um, change these values of the resistors R1 and R2 to compensate and we should be all good you may even want to say for instance take out the um, uh, the resistor here and put a trimmer a potentiometer a small potentiometer trim it till you get the right shape and then right take the value of that potentiometer and swap it for a hard fixed um, value resistor and to be honest with you that is about it that's all there is to it so as like I said it's very important we have a we, we have our triangle in that's essential and we wave shape with pretty much one two three four five six seven seven parts nice and nice and easy right um, if you want to see how the triangle wave shaping is done please refer to part four I think in this video series anyway thank you for watching people I shall be back for more business um, catch you all soon thank you for watching bye